Hi guys, this is Steve on the Guru Brew. How you doing today? Hey, today uh, Christmas came a little bit early. Uh, we got a package in the mail that we've been expecting for about two months, and here it is. This package contains the famous raspberry pie. We ordered this from Allied Electronics uh, the very beginning of October and we planned on getting it in so we could do some really cool projects with it and we just now got it in the mail today so um, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and let's take a look at it and uh, we'll see how far we get with it today so hang out with me and we'll get started Well, this is it. This is the long-awaited raspberry pie that we ordered through Allied Electronics two months ago. We ordered it at the beginning of October, and it just now got here. So there was a waiting list, and from what I understand, they finally lifted the quantity of one uh, limit. They, rate, they took that off, so you can get as many as you want now. This little computer is self-contained and it's designed to run with Linux operating system and the card was only $35 so that's the attractive part of it. Very nice card. The Raspberry Pi is manufactured through a licensing deal with Element 14 and Premier Farnell in RS Electronics. Uh, they're registered as a nonprofit organization with the hopes of interesting um, new computer users to experiment with these. I've got a little business card here that we use for the Guru Brew it's um, regulation size so you can see it's about the same size as the the car itself this um, has a Broadcom BCM 2835 system on a chip it's a 700 megahertz processor and um, you can attempt to um, overclock this up to one gigahertz without affecting the warranty so that's really cool too it's got a video core uh, GPU on it um, it's been upgraded to 512 meg of RAM because this is the the B version there was an A version this is the B There's the outputs for the video. And it's got the composite as well as D the DMI, which is here. Um, it's got Ethernet, uh, two USB ports. I believe those are the 2.0. Um, audio. This is a header for the input output. This is your power connector, which is a mini uh, USB. It's a 5 volts, I want to say 700 milliamp input. We're going to have to try to find a transformer for that. I didn't order one. Very nice card and then on the back is for an SD card and you have to actually make an SD card um, with a download off the Raspberry Pi website that allows you to boot the Linux distribution uh, Debian is a pretty popular one that other users are using as well as uh, Fedora and Arch Linux also um, this is the model B B10 B1.10 
B1.0. So, um, yeah, I figured that we could make some really cool projects with this. Being it's only $35, um, I can see putting this in a little case and maybe controlling a weather station or a camera or some sort of RC project. Um, yeah, my wheels are spinning as well as, you know, the 5 volt input could be run on solar panel if it was regulated. So um, I'm not really sure what we're going to do yet for a project, but I'm sure it'll be good. <laughs> so um, let me get on the website and I will show you how to make a card that this will boot from. So I will be back. Okay guys, I'm in front of my computer and I'm trying to make a boot disc for my Raspberry Pi that I just showed you. And um, the first thing that I want to do is go to raspberrypi.org and that's where I'm at right now. And if I go to this download section right here, go on down and there's a um, 32, a Windows 32 disc imager and this program will allow you to burn it um, or make it on an SD card from a Windows machine. So you want to click on this. <clears throat> and then take this top one right here, um, this binaries version right here, the second one. And at the at this time it's the it's called the tax free edition point six series. Just gonna click on it. And you want to save this to a place. I've already downloaded it and tried this out, but uh, I made a folder called Raspberry Pi, and I put it in there, and I saved it, and it's a zip image. And as soon as that downloads, then you're going to um, go ahead and save that off, and then um, go back to the Raspberry Pi, um, up to this Downloads button again. I'm going to be using the Debian distribution called Wheezy. You come on down here and you can either pick the torrent or the zip file. I choose the zip file. It's called the direct download, which is here. I click that. And then it will come up and ask you to save. I'm going to save that as well. That will also be a zip file, so I'm going to go ahead and save it in the last place that I just put the uh, the burner software and save that and then once you get both of the um, downloads um, I have a folder here and the first thing you're going to want to do is unzip them and if you don't know how to unzip you can come up to the folder and right click and go to extract all next and then go next again and it will extract it to a folder like this and you have to do it to both of them and you can see that I've already done that with both of these here and the whoops, the one that once that's all done you want to launch the, um, the disk imager binary which is here and you're looking for the Win32 Disk Imager EXE. Double click. And then run. And then you'll get this little um, image file prompt up here. And hit this little folder. And then you're going to want to navigate to your folder where you saved the Wheezy um, folder. Double click that. And then click on the IMG folder or I'm sorry, the IMG um, file and then hit the save button and that'll put the name of the file up here and then you're going to have to find yourself a SD card such as this one and it has to be at least 4 gig and up to 32 gig. I have a 16 gig here so I'm going to um, take that and put it in my SD reader 
if you don't have an SD reader you're gonna have to get one if you don't have that and keep in mind that this will be the boot disc and this will be become part of the Raspberry Pi so you don't want to use something that you don't intend to erase or that you might need for something else um, once that's done you can uh, click on this device button here Let's see if I can find mine mine's known as F now so you can come up here and click on this device and put the F in there and I've already done this so it's not asking me to um, it's not giving me a, d a device in here but if, if it were um, my F would show up in here and then I would hit the right button which is here and it would um, proceed along here and it, it takes quite a few minutes but in the end it'll uh, finish and say that it's done and then you can exit and then once it's done you can um, go into my computer and click on the SD card that you just made and you can see all these files here and these are the, the controlling files in Debian um, Wheezy for the um, Raspberry Pi and <clears throat> The card is now ready to put in the Raspberry Pi and boot from it, and we're going to do that next here. Um, I want to show you this file. It's called config.txt. If you open it with um, Notepad++ or WordPad, you can come in and edit it easily. And it's fully commented, and it has things in there such as resolution for the monitor that you might be using or if you're going to um, want to overclock it, that sort of thing can be all changed in here. I'm not going to mess with these right now, but uh, I just wanted to bring your attention that they are there. Okay, so I have my card here. and my little SD card here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it in my Raspberry Pi and I'll meet you back out front. Well, here's my boot card that I just made on my SD. I use a 16-bit HP and here it is and this card is gonna just stay right in here just like that and it will just become part of this and stay with it unless I um, wish to upgrade it at a, at a different time so that's as far as I can get today on this, guys. I, I looked around and I tried to find a 5-volt um, transformer in DC that has at least 700 milliamps. And I found one that had 600 milliamps for my phone. And uh, that's not quite enough, so I want to do it right. So I'm going to go shopping here in the next couple days and pick one up locally. And um, as soon as I do that, we'll go ahead and hook it up the rest of the way and uh, boot it for the first time. Really looking forward to it. There's really going to be some neat projects coming out of this. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Guru Brew. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And take care of yourself. See you later. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.